Hi everybody, Felipe here. It's been a long time that I haven't been on YouTube, but I'm coming with a very important video about workflow between Sony A7 cameras, Final Cut Pro 10, and DaVinci Resolve. This is mainly for a lot of documentary filmmakers, independent filmmakers that are using these pretty amazing cameras. Uh, and they're editing on Final Cut and they're gonna collaborate with the colorist on DaVinci. I'm here to warn you about headache that you're gonna have in case you don't follow the correct workflow or the correct workaround that some will say to deal with these camera files. First of all, if your camera supports doing unique names like the Sony Alpha 1, you should definitely enable that. For example, my camera files, they're never C0001. They always have a date in the beginning, then an identifier that is my camera, the camera angle or something like that, and then uh, a number for that clip. When I format my card, it doesn't reset that number. Okay, so these are unique file names. You need to make sure you have that. If your camera is recording C0001, then you will always want to rename those files. Really, trust me, you need to rename those files. If you have a documentary and you have 60 something C0001 files, that's gonna cause you a lot of headache and it's gonna cause a lot of people a lot of headache without, uh, throughout your whole workflow. So that's tip number two or one, I lost count already, rename. Second thing is Sony camera files from the A7 series, they are recording on MP4 containers that do not support timecode properly. They found a way around the recording timecode there somewhere in the metadata that not every application reads correctly, it, which is something that I'm gonna show you here. Um, so be aware of that. You need to actually go and keep the original files for your colorist and, well, create new files to work on Final Cut. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of headache. So I have here on my computer a few test files and I will show them to you now. Uh, and let's take a look at that. Now, let me show you a couple of things that you can do and you should do in case you're doing this workflow between Sony camera files, Final Cut Pro 10 and DaVinci Resolve, okay? So let's take a look now first with Catalyst, uh, Catalyst Browse. Here I have an SD card and I have my M4 root folder. If I go into it and click in one of my clips, I, I see here all the metadata that has been recorded by the Sony camera. So I have timecode 10.15.0309. I have the format, I have color space, I have bit rate, resolution, frame rate. Then I also have a bunch of other information uh, and including gamma equation, color primaries, coding equations, f-stop, all of that is in the metadata here of this file. So that's great, but that's Sony's own application, okay? You are not gonna be editing on this. So now let's take a look at what DaVinci sees from those files. So let me take a look at that camera card. Here it is, M4 root, um, clip. Here are my clips. <laughs> One of them is showing offline. Both of them are showing offline. That's amazing. Um, DaVinci, not great look right now. So let me import those. Um, even though it's showing us offline for whatever reason, here it is what's important. It's reading the time code of that MP4, okay? It's reading them correctly. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of audio information, just, just that really. Now let's take a look at how Final Cut deals with that. There are two ways that people generally are dealing with these files on Final Cut. The first way is that they're going into the SD card, they are digging through here, ah, oh, found here. Oh, I'm gonna copy all of this. I'm gonna copy including the XML so we don't lose any metadata, right? So I'm gonna put here and I'm gonna create a, a Sony files from SD, okay and I copied my files there. And then what I do is drag and drop those MP4s to Final Cut, but look at what happens. Time code, no time code, starting zero, not good. Uh, any other information? Nope, no camera information, nothing, nothing whatsoever. So 
This is first step and I can already tell you, this is not gonna help you at all. Let, it, let us step back and now try to use the import dialog into that same folder that you copied already to your hard drive. Sony files, okay, leave in place. Okay, copy, import. Well, still zero. No time code, no other information. Not great again. So now let's go to the other method, which is the method that will work for most uh, Sony camera files. But for example, for the A1 that I have here, doesn't work. So also not a very valid way. So clicking directly on my SD card, it already sees the clips there. I select those two clips that are the originals, the other two are proxies. Copy to Final Cut is not going to let you leave in place because it's on the SD card and or at least on the SD card structure. So it's going to copy to your media folder and it will rewrap those files. But look at that. Not only it's reading the wrong time code, it's saying that's drop frame. And when you look at camera ID, yeah, it comes a very nice string that you can't really read. Uh, camera name, real, yeah, all screwed up. Still wrong time code. The correct way or the best workaround, the best workflow that there is at the moment for this Sony camera Final Cut Da Vinci thing is to use Edit Ready. And I will show you why. If we go to Edit Ready, and I'll open that, and we get our Sony camera files, I can even get them from the copy here from the SD. You don't need to get from directly from the SD. Doesn't matter where you get it from. And tell it to rewrap. And I'm gonna tell it to rewrap to this uh, folder right here. So I'm gonna just um, replace, ignore and continue. I'm gonna replace those files that are there. Uh, and when I look at those files now, edit ready, I have my MOVs. And let's take a look at what Edit Ready has done to those. First, I have now the time code. I have the correct time code according to Sony Catalyst. Um, second, hey, came my original camera name here, the, the, the model for my Sony A1. And look at that. Device manufacturer, camera ID, Sony. Great. So this is great. Now let's take a look at DaVinci, how it reads First of all, the final cut rewrap. So let's find those. This is the these are the files that final cut rewrapped. And wow, yeah, drop frame starting at zero. Not great. Uh, second, let's see how it reads the one from edit ready, which is here in my desktop. It reads the correct time code. That's great. So wrong, correct, correct. All right, so now your colorist normally will have just the original camera files to work from and you should always send your colorist the original camera files. What I will keep here on my browser, on my media pool, will be just the Sony uh, camera files. Now I will show you why you would have such headache if you didn't understand yet the point that I'm trying to make and I'm failing miserably. If I work with those files with the wrong time code on Final Cut, create a project, Sony files from FCP and create here my project 4K, do my edit, right? I did my edit, looks amazing. And I export this, I will export this XML and I export here to my downloads and I will say that this is FCP to DaVinci and save. Now I go to DaVinci and I go here on my edit. So now your colorist only has those original camera files, right? And they're going to import your timeline. There it is and open and one of the things that you're going to do is automatically import source clips into media pool. No, because they already have those files and then I'm going to click OK and then OK again. And then this is what's going to be the problem. The clip, this is the clip name, failed to link because the time code extents do not match any clip in the media pool. Yes, you're not going to be able to 
link your timeline to the original camera files because these clips that are here that are referencing in your timeline are all starting with timecode zero. And the files that your colorist have are being re read correctly. They do not start with timecode zero. What's the workaround for that is for you to use those edit ready clips that you rewrapped that have the correct um, that have the correct time code. I'm gonna put here edit ready. Oh my god, edit ready. Set my resolution 4K. Okay, do my crazy cut. All right, export the XML. And it's ready. Let's see, Peter Da Vinci. Save. Going to Da Vinci and import that timeline. Now, this is the one from Edit Ready, and look at what's going to happen. I'm going to do exactly the same. Do not import the, the clips and click OK. And now, even though I was using a rewrapped MOV on Final Cut, DaVinci reconnected automatically those to the MP4 original camera files. So this is the workflow that you really want to do uh, in case you're doing really this thing of Sony A7 series to Final Cut to DaVinci. I hope I, I, I'm, tr I'm being clear here. This is a huge problem between Sony and Final Cut Pro specifically. Uh, I don't know how it is with Premiere. If we take a look here on Kino, <laughs> and let's see what Kino will, will, will tell us about all of this. Uh, Kino, let's do MP4 root and take a look at this uh, here. Look at that. Uh, starting time code, let's just open this clip zero because Kino is using the same framework AV Foundation to read those files as Final Cut and probably the, the problem here is AV Foundation so even if you would be uh, creating rewrapping anything with uh, Kino you wouldn't get anywhere because you would still be getting the wrong time code let's say that you're watching this video and you already did the things that I'm saying for you to not do how can you now send this to DaVinci without uh, having a lot of headache? Well, there is a way around. So let me go back here to Final Cut, to the, uh, to the uh, project that I used with the wrong time code. Okay, the way around this is to create new files that will reference the time code that you're seeing on Final Cut. And one way of doing that is to transcode within Final Cut. Let's say I'm going to create here optimized media. Okay, uh, I'll let Final Cut create those that opt op optimized media, which is going to be ProRes 422. Uh, and I will need to send that to the colorist. So if I go here into my downloads, um, I will have a, an FCP, uh, a Final Cut optimized media folder. Yeah, there it is. And that's what I will need to send to my colorist. Uh, so on DaVinci, on their media pool, I'm going to look, uh, create here a new bin, not here, but here, optimized FCP. All right, so I'm going to get my optimized media, those two, bring here to my media pool, and we see there the same time code that Final Cut is reading, or you would send them the rewrapped from Final Cut, which, uh, yeah, it's a mess. Uh, now I can go into my edit, try to import again the timeline, uh, import timeline from FCP, uh, input new timeline name, sure. Oh yeah, I already have this before. Okay, now it connects because now it has those files with the wrong time code. So yeah, if you already went through that, that's what you're gonna need to do. All right, thanks for watching and good luck.